So, it's finally October, the best month of the year, and most of this stuff is already done, you know. I already got some of the games I want to do for this year, you know, or this month, technically. Why am I saying year? Uh, that's done, and it's mostly all recorded besides one game, but that should be fine. That should be fine. All right, so that's done, and that's done. Hopefully, there isn't any more distractions, and I can get most of this shit out on time. All right, you know what? I'm actually pretty confident. Here's hoping for a good October. Several days later. Fuck! Originally, I had wanted this video to come out sometime during the beginning of October. But thanks to the midterms and uh, being close to a breakdown, you know, whether it be physical breakdown, emotional, mental, it doesn't matter. I was about to break down either way. As you can clearly see, my plans have been fucked. Yet, I'm still going to be doing some of the other Halloween videos I want to do as well. This is one, and the other one is going to be the last one. I have wanted to do three, but that clearly didn't fucking happen. And if some of the games I want to do, you know, especially next month, gets pushed back, it gets pushed back. Because you know why? Fuck it! Back in 2021, I did a Halloween video for the horror RPG Sweet Home, and since then I've been wanting to make this a tradition to review some horror games during the month of October. I had wanted to do one last year, but I ended up getting stuck with editing the Strange Journey video, which honestly, it might as well be a damn horror game with just how the atmosphere is alone. As for today, I normally try not to review games from franchises that I want to do a retrospect on either eventually or at least in like in the next year. but. I'm making an exception for this one because I've been in a Resident Evil mood for a hot minute now. So today we're going to be reviewing the Resident Evil 2 remake. But before we begin on that, I want to provide some historical context for the series as a whole and why everybody was really looking forward to this game. Back in 1989, Capcom released a horror RPG, Sweet Home, for the Famicom. And this game was an adaptation of the movie with the same name, and it was important for a lot of reasons. The biggest being that it set up a lot of the groundwork for what would later be known as survival horror. Everything from the annoying ass about a backtracking, limited inventory, and the hope that you don't encounter something when you're not ready at all. Fast forward a bit to the early 90s, and Takuro Fujiwara wanted to do a remake of Sweet Home, though due to Capcom not having the rights to it, this remake officially turned to something entirely new. Fujiwara ended up getting a fresh game designer to make something similar to the aforementioned game, with that individual being the legendary Shinji Mikami, and in 1996 we got Resident Evil, or Biohazard if you're in Japan. Now I won't get into the big details about how successful this game was, or for that matter, the whole line of sequels and spin-offs that came after. Considering the fact that this franchise damn dare helped to revive the zombie genre, I, I mean, it speaks for itself. Six years after the release of the first Resident Evil, it ended up getting a really good remake. It was made as part of an exclusivity deal with Nintendo to release the older and new RE games to their newest console, the GameCube. Now, I mentioned earlier about the RE1 remake being really good, and that's not just me gassing this game up. The remake turned a game that, looking back, wasn't really scary to something that makes you anxious for every area you have to go through, hoping and praying that you don't come across a zombie or the other countless monsters roaming the mansion. And with the release of the remake, it left fans wondering if Capcom was going to remake RE2, though they would eventually have to wait until 2015 when Capcom finally announced that the remake for RE2 was starting development. And while people were excited, some had felt hesitant about it, which was understandable. Around the time that this game was announced, Capcom was sort of fucking up when it came to Resident Evil and technically all their games, but that's a story for another time. 
Also, for another bit of context for RE's case, due to the poor sales of the RE1 remake, the series would begin to incorporate more action starting with RE4, and while there were still some survival horror elements within that game and its sequel, RE6 went full on action scene, fuck the survival horror experience, and bring that nigga Michael Bay out here for this. This game in Operation Raccoon City was released around the same year, left the nastiest taste in people's mouths. And when you go back to back of having titles that are not exactly seen as being good, is going to leave fans worried about the quality of whatever comes next. And it wouldn't be any better as in 2016 Capcom released Umbrella Corps, which I'm now just learning about and uh, man, oh man, this looks generic as all hell. But in 2017, the franchise was essentially revived with Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, which was a return to form. And later in 2019, Resident Evil was back yet again with the Resident Evil 2 remake, which, safe to say, helped cement the return of what we know Resident Evil to be. And surprisingly, this game had been on the docket since the release of the RE1 remake. The reason why we didn't get it any sooner was due to Mikami not wanting the development to conflict with RE4, which around that time... Uh, it was going through some shit. Alongside this, the team behind this game essentially considered this a new entry rather than a remake. Now, for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna be referring to this game as a remake, but I, I definitely see what they were talking about. Now, I don't think I need to talk about is how much people were like loving this game, especially when it released and even still today. Critics and fans alike were celebrating this game like it was the second coming of Christ. With all the praise it was getting, I still remember having to debate whether to get RE2 or Kingdom Hearts 3 on release day because I didn't want to miss out on either of them. And spoiler alert, I wouldn't be able to play this game until 2021. Considering the fact that I had to wait 13 years for Kingdom Hearts 3, I damn sure was going to get that game. And normally I have way more to say for like this section of the video, but... I just want to get into this damn game. This has been a game I've been wanting to review on this channel since 2021, so I am very excited to do this. But before we get into it, let me give you all some disclaimers real quick. The way this story is told is a little weird, so I'm going to try my best to summarize it the best I can. Though, I'm also going to be trying something a little new here, so bear with me. Like always, I will be supplying a timestamp so you guys don't get spoiled, though, um... Be aware that if you haven't played RE1 or its remake, I am going to be spoiling bits of the story, a little bit of a setup for what happens here. So, yeah, uh... A couple months prior to the events of RE2, a series of grisly murders near the town of Raccoon City causes a specialized unit of the Raccoon City Police Department, STARS, to go to the Art Clay Mountains to investigate. However, they end up in a mansion after being attacked by rabid dogs, and during their investigation, it covers a dark secret with the pharmaceutical company Umbrella conducting illegal experiments that are turning people into zombies with a man-made virus known as the T-Virus. Yet, despite the team blowing the mansion up, the T-Virus ends up affecting Raccoon City's water supply, leading to the events of the game. Depending on who you choose to play as, we meet either Leon S. Kennedy or Claire Redfield going to a gas station in the outskirts of Raccoon City. There's Leon, a rookie cop who is about to start his first day, and then we have Claire, who's looking for her brother Chris. After dealing with the zombies in and around the gas station, the two manage to briefly escape into the city, but are separated after being hit by a fucking gas tanker. Okay, so... Forget about the logic of them, you know, not dying to an explosion. How the hell are they just walking it off like it's nothing after they just got launched into a car? Shit, they're better than me because if that ended up happening to me, oh, yeah, I man, probably would not be walking man. that off anytime I'm soon. The two decide to meet at the police department where they discover zombies, this blind monster that looks like a naked lizard known as a liquor, and a tyrant the community calls Mr. X, who has been given the tax to kill everybody in the police department. With the help of Police Lieutenant Marvin, we manage to find a secret way out of the department and later come across the epitome of an eldritch being, who we fill with bullets to get it the fuck away from us. And from here is where the story starts to diverge a bit. Despite both characters going through similar events, they have a good number of different shit to go through. Some of those events aren't too bad, though so many others are also the epitome of an ultra shit show. It isn't until the last part of the game where things start to sort of connect again, sort of, but it can't get confused with how it's sequenced. Like how is this happening with Leon, but Claire isn't experiencing the same thing. And for that matter, I might as well bring up the second run real quick, just to help elaborate on some details. 
The second run is essentially a second playthrough that switches the perspective to the character you didn't choose. So, for example, if you ended up choosing Claire as your first run, then you'll see Leon's perspective for the second run, and vice versa. You unlock this after being in the game once, and I won't talk about the gameplay changes just yet, but it definitely helps to tie the story together. Details that weren't seen in the first run are either elaborated here or kind of expanded upon, and there's also nice little letters written from the character you chose during your first run. Now, I'm mentioning this mode to you guys because this is the best way to experience the game. Plus, it also helps to kind of connect some of the story bits more smoothly, I guess. Yes, if that makes sense. Because if you did what I did and you just booted up a new game instead of starting a second run after being whatever character you beat, uh, you're gonna be mad confused. And that brings me to the other reason why I'm mentioning this, because I didn't realize all of that until the third playthrough for this video. Yes, despite me having played the original RE2 since middle school and the remake for the past two years, I never realized the requirements for doing the second run, and I only realized it when I finished Claire's first run and the game ended with this. Yeah. We'll talk about that later, so for now, let's just head back to the story. After defeating the monster, Leon and Claire ends up meeting their quote-unquote partner that's with them up until the end game. For Leon, he meets Ada Wong, an FBI agent who is looking to find evidence to take Umbrella down. And for Claire, she meets Sherry Birkin, a little girl trying to look for her mom. However, just as we get introduced to Sherry, she is kidnapped by the chief of police, Brian Irons, who we learn is working with Umbrella. Now, while Leon escapes with Ada to the sewers, having to deal with a giant mutated croc Claire heads to the orphanage to save Sherry, where not only do we come across the monster that we seemingly killed earlier, but we find Sherry's mom, Annette Birkin, and from here is where a couple things are revealed. Sherry is the daughter of an umbrella researcher named William Birkin, who is developing a new man-made virus called the G-Virus. Now, unlike the T-Virus, this virus virtually increases the infected's healing factor, at the cost of them becoming more animalistic. However, during a raid to detain William, and take his research, he is fatally wounded and later injects himself with the G-Virus, becoming the monster that we were fighting earlier. Alongside him was his wife Annette, who was helping her husband with the research but is now trying to find a way to stop him before he causes any more damage. Now in the case of Claire's Rouse, he isn't exactly winning Mother of the Year award, but you can tell that she's worried for her daughter. But if you end up playing through Leon's Rouse, she actually appears more as a villain, or more accurately, an initial villain. Speaking of which, let's see what he's going through in the sewers. After escaping and killing the mutated crocodile, Leon meets up with Ada who is confronting Annette. And just as he's about to shoot Ada, Leon takes a bullet for her and from here Ada attempts to chase Annette through the sewers. After surviving some of her traps, Ada ends up being injured and we later cut back to Leon attempting to save her. This is similar with Claire who after waking up finds Sherry who somehow ended up in a similar area to Ada. Though regardless of which character we play as, the two fight and briefly defeat the mutated William with them later heading to an underground laboratory for, of course, different reasons. Leon and Ada head down there to collect a sample of the G-Virus as evidence. Meanwhile, Claire finds out that Sherry had been affected by William and is heading down to collect the G-Virus so it can be used to save Sherry. The two manage to find the sample but in turn have to deal with the mutated William once again. However, Annette takes over in an attempt to stop her husband but is tossed aside like a ragdoll. The two later defeat the mutated William again, yet the outcome is something to say the least. Regardless of who you play as, Annette would later die due to her injuries, but not before helping Leon and Claire in some way. Annette helps Claire in saving Sherry, which is nice and simple. Yet, for Leon, he learns from Annette that Ada isn't exactly who she says she is, and when Leon confronts her, the suspicion is correct, with Ada pleading for Leon to hand over the sample. Ada is later shot by the dying Annette, and despite Leon trying to save her, Ada falls to her death. Allegedly. And I'm not going to elaborate on that until we do our retrospect. Leon and Claire escape from the laboratory, dealing with everything under the sun, including a powered up version of Mr. X for Leon, and Claire has to deal with William Birkin for the fourth fucking time. Luckily, we mow him down with a minigun. <laughs> The two finally reunite, but it's short-lived when Birkin shows up for one last bout with either Leon or Claire, riddling him with bullets and Dan there incinerating him from the explosion. Leon, Claire, and Sherry make it out onto the highway, with the two swearing that they'll put it into Umbrella for everything that they've been through. And that is the Resident Evil 2 story. Damn, this was so annoying to talk about.
One of the most annoying things about talking about the story for the first two RE games is having to talk about the events that happen between both playable characters. Mainly because the sequence of events are weird as all hell. Supposedly there is a certain way that fans recommend you play through the story starting with Claire and then doing the second run for Leon. Though I ended up doing the reverse which might explain why some parts were difficult to explain. But regardless, I digress. This story is really good. Now. The original is pretty good, and hell, I would even consider it to be pretty iconic. But something that the remake does, and I still don't know how to best describe it, is that it takes everything that was great about the original, puts it into a modern light, and changes it to the point in which it's like, it's still the original. You can still tell it's like OG Resident Evil 2, but it's even better now, if that makes sense. Now, here's the thing. Most of the changes that are in the Resident Evil 2 remake is associated with the gameplay, which we'll definitely get into. But when talking about the story, something that I did notice a lot was that either some of the stuff from the original is straight up like omitted, or it was greatly expanded upon. The whole orphanage section is something that's new to this game and actually does a great job to further show Irons as the piece of shit he is. There's also the fact that in general, the remake brings out a lot of themes relating to family, which might have been in the original, but I just didn't notice. The characters are largely the same, with Leon being everybody's lovable dork, though it is slightly toned down here. Claire is still a badass with a little bit more vulnerability here and there, but I argue she's a lot more badass here than in the original. Then there's Ada, who's slightly changed going from a reporter to an FBI agent, which actually is a nice little change which made the twist slightly less noticeable. Another thing fixed obviously is with the voice acting and the cutscenes being a higher bump of quality. Of course, they are a given, but I still remember it throwing me off of how well everyone sounded. And I don't know if it was intentional or not, but some of the jokes stayed on brand to the original. I did hear some people saying they didn't like the voice acting for Claire, but to me it sounded a whole lot better than the original, which sounded creepy in moments that were supposed to be more somber. You know where your parents are? They both work at the Umbrella Chemical Plant, near the city limits. The chemical plant? Then what are you doing here? <laughs> what the fuck? Beyond that, there are problems with this story, you know, like the sequence of events that I mentioned earlier. But if you were to bring up any other issues with this story, it doesn't really do much to hurt the overall game. And if anything, those problems are outweighed by the countless amount of good things the story has done. Overall, I love this story, and it's just as good as the original, which I really like. Everything has been greatly improved, and it also feels a lot more emotional now. Though, the problem is, is that there isn't a lot left that I can praise about it, because it's already been talked about by hundreds of people already. Well, wait, there is the gameplay, though. Hmm. Two hours later. <laughs> There is so much shit in this game. And I don't mean to tell it like it's GTA 5, Minecraft levels, or you can do whatever you want. No, I'm talking about for a Resident Evil game. There are so many new additions, new changes, that honestly, doing all of that, or saying all of that, and plus my experience with this game, what could have been his own separate video. I could have made that my own separate video if I wanted to. And here's the thing, right? I want to get this out by Halloween. Yeah, I want to try to get this out by Halloween. And with the way I was going, the fact it took me three days to write this section, that wasn't going to happen until I said, fuck it, I'm going to condense everything. So, just letting y'all know now that I might not be able to talk about every little detail about this game, its mechanics, and all that shit. I am going to try my best to, you know, cover everything. And yeah, cool. Please don't be in the comments like, why didn't you mention this? Why didn't you mention that? Because if so, y'all would have gotten this by like maybe November 11th. Especially with the schoolwork going on. Jesus Christ. So. Yeah, with that said, despite the remake being relatively faithful to the original, they switched up so much shit to the point where if you have played the original, you're gonna get a severe case of whiplash. The most obvious change is to the controls, which are in third person now. And I don't know if this was intentional or not, but the movement feels tanky in some ways. I know you can make quick turns like in RE3 and I 
think RE4, but I have yet to play the latter. Though, regardless, it isn't that bad to control. Hell, I actually like the way it feels, especially when you have to juke through zombies and the other countless monsters in this hellhole. Which, as you'll see later on, you might have to do that. Though, it doesn't mean your life with nothing to defend yourself. When you start the game, you'll get a handgun which can be used to kill or subdue enemies in your way. Now, I suggest doing the latter because enemies in this game are literal bullet sponges. They take about 5 bullets to the head. Yes, the place where everybody tells you to shoot takes 5 bullets to take them down. Even then, they'll come back dusting it off like it's nothing. And with the limited ammo that this game gives you throughout, yeah, uh, if you try to fight every enemy, you're fucked. So the best thing to do in this case is just to shoot them in their kneecaps and if you have the bullets to spare, then shoot them in the head. Besides the handgun, you do get other weapons which vary between the routes you do. Alongside this, there are upgrades that can be obtained which turns your gun into the best version of itself. And I'm gonna tell you this now, try to find these upgrades to save yourself the trouble for the later parts of the game. Trust me, you're gonna wanna do that. Now as for what you can get, if you play as Leon, he gets access to a shotgun, magnum, a flamethrower, and the good old rocket launcher at like, the tail end of the game. Though playing as Claire will net you a handgun that can later turn into a fucking magnum, a grenade launcher, SMG, this weird gun called the Spark Shot, which is a more, uh, deadly taser, I guess, and a minigun. So, you know, compared to Leon, you know, he's just out on the job, about to get prepared for some zombie killing and stuff. You got Claire, who is preparing for fucking war with her arsenal of weapons. And I'll let this be known right now, that between Leon and Claire, Claire should be the first person you play if you've never played Resident Evil 2 before. Because her route compared to Leon's is so much easier. There were so many moments in this route that were stressful, and despite Claire's route being not as bad, I've come across shit like this. I'm, I'm just gonna take the L. Grenade in your mouth, nigga. Get that shit. I know you're running, you fat bitch. Fucker, and I use acid rounds, so. Oh shit! Other than that, the exploration isn't too bad, and it differs between routes. Leon can access certain areas easily while Claire King, and the puzzles in this game are easier than the original, but the moment you get to the sewers is where you'll be reminded of the chest puzzles from the original. God damn it. And when you get to the last section, you gotta deal with a solution puzzle, which. Regardless of how many times I've played it, it was still annoyed as all hell. Besides the zombies, most of your progression will be... When going through the police department, you gotta deal with Mr. X, a tyrant who wants your ass dead. And unlike all the other enemies in this game, he cannot die. At. All. Plus, he chases you throughout the entire police department and can damn near go into any room. Honestly, the best way of survival is by either going to a safe room where he can't enter, or running like Wesley Snipes running from his taxes. Just be prepared for this man to teleport to your nearest location as everywhere he goes, he's listening out for where you can possibly be. And no matter how quiet you are, somehow, some way, he's still gonna be up in your ass. There's also the other enemies you can come across, which are all just Eldritch Beans. The Lickers are the literal vein of my fucking existence, cause they can hit like a tank. The Samurai Dogs aren't that bad if you can get a jump on them, though if you can't, then good luck trying to kill them cause you're gonna be wasting a bunch of bullets. Then there's these Eldritch motherfuckers who are infected with the G-Virus, and unless you're stacked with ammo, being caught by these fuckers is almost guaranteed. And finally are the plant zombies, which are just crimson heads from the RE1 remake, which if you never played before, then all you need to know is that you need to burn them now. Or in this case, you gotta burn them like two times, but still, burn them when you get the chance. Despite how deadly and annoying these enemies can be, if you get caught by them, you can use items like hand grenades, flask grenades, and a knife to get out of a quick bind. All fine and dandy until you learn that your trusty knife has durability on them. With the knives and grenades you get throughout the game, they can be a lifesaver, but it's generally advised to save these for boss fights, which are easily the dullest thing in this game. 
I kid you not, all the bosses have one strategy, and that is to stay the fuck away from them or risk getting steamrolled. And while most of them were pretty easy, there were only like two bosses that had given me the most trouble, being William's third fight and final fight. His third fight had always given me a hard time as the only way to defeat him was using the crane. And this would have been fine if the fight wasn't in a small arena and the fact that he could speed blitz you from afar. But after my second playthrough for the video, it actually wasn't that bad. Annoying, yes, but it wasn't that bad. But you wanna know what was annoying? That freaking final fight. Remember when I mentioned the second run? Well, this is the only way to fight this boss and my god, this was the most annoying ass fight I had to deal with. I ended up doing this as Claire and what should have been an all out assault turned into me getting curb stomped 17 ways into Sunday. Even with the upgrades, I got ammo depth and had to repeat that game over scene 40 times. It got to the point where I said fuck it and played on assist mode which lowers the enemy's health. And yes, there's multiple difficulties, but the outcome is still the same. No matter which mode you choose, you're going to be on edge for this entire game. And this is one thing the remake does really well. Every environment is scary in their own way, and not to mention, it's dark as shit no matter where you go. And compared to the original, where the police department was well lit and very comfortable, the remake leaves no room for it unless you go to the safe rooms. Every area, and I mean every area you go through, will make you feel on edge because you never know what's going to happen next. And I felt this walking through one in the halls thinking, man, isn't there supposed to be a liquor over here, only to go back later on and the motherfucker came out of nowhere to give me that two piece. The music and sound also helps to keep you on edge. Just a little too well though. Most of the sounds are very sudden or pick up very quickly when you're near an area where an enemy can be. And they also straight up trick you a couple times, like you're hearing the music pick up, it's going, it's going, and then boom, nothing. I just got blue balled for nothing. And honestly, if I was like 12 or 13 playing this, I would have dropped this game quicker than Netflix be dropping good quality shows. Now, before we go and you know, wrap this video up, there is one last elephant in the room to mention, that being the second run. As I mentioned in the story section, this mode can be unlocked after being the character's first run, which then switches the perspective of the character you didn't choose. So for example, if you end up choosing Claire, then you end up playing as Leon for the second run and of course vice versa. And if you're expecting things to be similar to your first run, then uh, uh, prepare for an interesting experience. This run starts at the point where Leon and Claire meet up again in the police department. Though instead of going through the front door, you have to find another way around. And from here is where you learn that all of the items and enemies are SWAT. So instead of getting item A in this one area, now you gotta go elsewhere for it. For the most part, this mode wasn't as bad as everyone said it was, and hell, I would say it's a lot quicker to boot. The only problem is that you do come across Mr. X early on, which is a pain in the ass, and of course, the last William fight you have to do, so uh, yeah, make sure to conserve the fuck out of your ammo. Overall, I enjoyed my time with the remake. There's a lot of things that this game does extremely well, and of course, the replay value for it is high for all the things that you can unlock. Being the second run mode with any character gives you the four survivor, which is essentially a speed run, and being that gives you the tofu survivor, easily the best mode in this entire game. There's also the ghost survivor mode, which are what if scenarios for characters that were either killed or we just didn't know what happened after we first saw them. In general, there is a lot here. And oh fuck, I forgot about the partner sexes for this game. Oh, game over, Sherry. <laughs> You know what? N never mind. When the RE2 remake was announced, I remember going through the YouTube comments and seeing people both excited and worried about it. And you know, besides the worry about the quality of the game, I think it was a lot more centered around whether or not it was going to live up to the original. And when I ended up finally getting this game, man, I knew within the first few minutes that this game far exceeded my expectations. And you can see it with the amount of copy that this game sold as well, because as of December 2019, the game ended up outselling the original RE2. Yes, you heard me correctly. The remake of a highly successful game outsold the original. And as of this year, it ended up selling over 12.6 million copies. Yeah, everybody fucking loved this game. 
Plus, it ends up starting the current trend of Capcom remaking some of the RE titles, which is great because now people have another avenue to play these games. Do they want to play the original? Then they can play the original. Do they want to play the remake? Then boom, they can play the remake, which is great. I don't know if it's going to you know, change the price of games like it, you know, like the original copies of shit, but I mean, it doesn't fucking matter. Accessibility, great. <laughs> and really, there's not really a lot else to say without repeating everything that everybody else has said about this game. Of course, beyond, you know, the whole, should you play this game? And even then, I don't really think I have to say it because it's, I made it pretty obvious. If you want to play this game for yourself, you can get it through all major retailers and online storefronts. Now, uh, I'm not sponsored by Catcom or anything, but at the time of this video's upload, they are having a Steam sale on some of their games, including Resident Evil. So, if you want to get the remake for $10, so y'all got into November 7th. Also, buy Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. Random, I know, but if you love Ace Attorney, then you're a guarantee you're gonna love this game and plus i wanted you know i wanted to do well so you know we may get more games from it so you know yeah 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 yo yo so before we head into this little editor's note that we got going i do want to thank you guys so much for watching to the end of the video now the reason why i'm doing this little editor's note right here is because some of my initial plans have changed now they're not anything like drastic where i'm not doing this anymore or i'm gonna be taking another break or some shit but no, it's more or less like some things I decided to rearrange a bit because of videos I wanted to put on my priority list more. Or I'd probably should rephrase that as something like videos I kind of want to do more than the other and vice versa and shit. In one of those videos that ended up getting changed was that Halloween related video that I mentioned earlier. And instead, I'm decided that I'm going to be doing a game from a franchise that's finally getting an animated series. Now, if you know what I'm talking about, don't spoil it in the comments. I just wanted to, you know, I want to let it be a surprise. Now, I am going to be doing something very different than how I usually record my videos because normally I try to focus on one game at a time. But for this one, I'm going to make a special exception and do them back to back. So while I'm doing stuff for video one, I could get ready to do stuff for video two and, you know, record everything. So once video one is done, video two will be about halfway done and it'll come out, you know, one week then next week so on so forth you know back to back back to back <laughs> so yeah uh, i know my dot process or at least the explanation behind that was not good uh i'm doing this with no script next time i probably should make a script for this editor's notes <laughs> so uh i hope that explains everything i know i was kind of like stumbling on my words no script all that good shit. but yeah i'm pretty excited for the next few videos so hopefully we can get all those good stuff also you know yeah, 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 yeah. so uh with that said, make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you guys enjoyed the video. Hit the bell notification so you guys know when the next video is going to be coming out. And make sure to stay safe. Go and touch some grass out there, you know, every once in a while. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!